Hi everybody, my name is Charles Henry Van der Poel. I am a first year master student at the Leuven School of Management in Business Engineering. Regarding the course of empirical finance given by Mrs. Berio that I followed, I will talk to you about a very interesting topic that is called endogeneity. First of all, let's give the definition of endogeneity. Endogeneity can be defined as a correlation between the explanatory variable and the error term in a regression, which will lead to one or more biased and inconsistent parameters. Before addressing the latter, I will discuss the causes and consequences of endogeneity for a single linear regression equation. The single linear regression equation for a population can be found at the top of the page. It has to meet three different requirements. First, unbiasedness. Second, consistency. And last, efficiency. An estimate is said to be unbiased estimate of a given parameter when the expected value of that estimator can be shown to be equal to the parameter being estimated. An estimator is said to be consistent if increasing the sample size produces an estimate with smaller standard error. Therefore, your estimate is consistent with the sample size. An efficient estimate is one which has a small standard error among all unbiased estimators. The best estimator is one which is the closest to the population parameter being estimated. The key conditions that have to be respected in order for the ordinary least squares estimators to be best linear and biased estimators are 1. A random sample of observations Secondly, a mean zero error term. A third one is a non-linear relationship between the explanatory variables. And lastly, an error term that is not correlated to an explanatory variable. It is empirically impossible to identify the error term u and therefore the correlation of the error term with the explanatory variables. Therefore, we cannot statistically ensure that an endogeneity problem has been solved. Now switch to the causes and consequences of endogeneity. The first cause of endogeneity can be because of omitted variables. Omitted variables are variables that should be included in the explanatory vector but are not because they are either forgotten, difficult to measure or inaccessible. This problem is particularly severe in corporate finance. The object of study, firms or CEO for example, are heterogeneous along many different dimensions, most of which are difficult to observe. For example, executive compensation depends on executives' ability, which are difficult to quantify, much less observe. True economic relation can be given by the first equation, with omega as the unobservable explanatory variable. The estimable postulation regression is given by the second equation with v equals gamma omega plus u as the composite error term. The omitted variable omega could be correlated with one or more explanatory variables. If not, OLS will estimate consistent parameters. If omega is correlated to an explanatory variable ikj, then the probability limit for the estimate of beta hat j is given by the third equation. The bias term Omega phi j is equal to the product of the E effect of the omitted variable on the dependent variable and the effect of the omitted variable on the included variable. In this case, OLS is inconsistent and the direction of the bias can be predicted. The second source of endogeneity can be simultaneity. Simultaneity occurs when the dependent variable has an effect on an explanatory variable and the other way around. For example, y can be the market-to-book ratio and x can be a measure of entity cover provisions. The bias created using OLS is given by beta hat. Unlike for omitted variables, the bias is difficult to predict because it will depend on the magnitude of effects that cannot be known a priori. The third source of endogeneity can come from measurement errors. When variables are measured incorrectly, the error becomes part of the regression error. A measurement error in the dependent variable will lead to inconsistent OLS estimates only when the measurement error is correlated with the explanatory variable. 
When there's no correlation, there will be no inconsistent estimates but an impact on the error variance and the parameter covariance. A measurement error in the independent variable will lead to inconsistent OLS estimates if the measurement error is correlated with the observed variable. The population model is given by the first equation and the estimable model is given by the second equation. The probability limit of the coefficient and the affected variable xk is Splim beta hat k. With sigma square r, the error variance from a linear regression of xk star on x1 to xk minus 1 and an intercept. Let's now switch to the next part of this presentation. A standard remedy for endogeneity is replacing the endogenous regressor xk with an instrumental variable z. An instrument is a variable respecting two conditions, referred to as the relevance and exclusion conditions. The relevance condition states that the partial correlation between the instrument and the endogenous variables is non-zero. In other words, gamma is non-zero. This is empirically testable. The exclusion condition requires that the covariance between z and u equals zero. This cannot be tested because the error term is unobservable. The two conditions imply that the only role the instrument has in influencing the dependent variable is through its effect on the endogenous variable. There must be at least as many instruments as endogenous regressors so that the coefficients are identified. To put in place an instrumental variable regression and to correctly estimate the parameters of the population model, we use the two-stage least square approach, named 2SLS. This method can be broken down into two parts. Firstly, the predicted values x hat k are estimated by regressing the endogenous regressor x k on all the exogenous regressors and instruments. Secondly, the endogenous variables are replaced with the predicted values x hat k from the first part followed by regression of the outcome variable y on all the exogenous variables and x hat k. The covariance between z and u equals zero cannot be tested. The validity of instrument is defined on the basis of rigorous economic argument. Let's now switch to a more practical example about sovereign wealth fund. In this work, they investigate the determinants of sovereign wealth fund SWF investment stock prices. They focus on the location of the investments and on the target industry. The methodology they used is given by the following equation. Delta stock price is the difference in the stock price of the target company I between two days. Cross border is a dummy variable that equals one if the SWF and target country are not the same. Strategic industry is a dummy variable that equals 1 if the target company operates in a strategic industry. The vector x includes several control variables, for example, political index, political tie, and so on. They first run an OLS regression with residuals clustered as SWF country level and SWF specific fixed FX to control for the quality or the experience of each fund. Secondly, they estimate an instrumental variables regression where the choice of the exclusion restriction is driven by the theoretical and empirical literature on finance and institutions. The results show that on a 50-day window around the SWF investments, cross-border investments have an average higher increase in stock price than the domestic SWF investments, while on the same time window, SWF investments in strategic industries show a higher drop in the stock price than SWF investment in non-strategic industries. They also found that the higher the, is the politicization of the fund and the higher is the stock price drop. I thank you for your attention. Feel free to put a green thumb if you really like this video. You can also subscribe to my channel if you want more videos about finance. Bye-bye!